Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here among so many Fulbright alum and Fulbright friends. I'm Liz, thank you so much for that introduction, and I did my Fulbright in Costa Rica in 2011, so it's been really great to reminisce and be living this experience here at the conference with you all. My talk today is going to be about digital storytelling for change. Now, if you look at this image, I'm sure many of you can see yourselves in that. We spend much more time and much more of our day like this than we do talking and speaking and looking at the world. And that's because the average adult in the US and Europe spends three to five hours on their smartphone. Now, raise your hand if you think that's a month. <laughs> or a week. Exactly, it's a day. That's why it's not here, because I wanted you all to play that guessing game with me, but you all know that we are on this device all of the time. And so if we want to change hearts and minds for global change and for good, then we need to be meeting people where they are, and that is here. I'm the founder of Director of Pulso, like you heard, and we are an organizing platform that's working to increase the political power of Latinos by building relationships online that can then lead to action offline. To date, Pulso has 450,000 subscribers that are receiving our messaging services every single week. And if you go to your phone and you go to the Facebook Messenger app, you can do this with me if you like, you go to the very top, you type in Project Pulso, you should see that image right over there. If you click Get Started, you will start to get content from Pulso and it'll look something like this. The first thing that we want to share with you as a best practice to use digital storytelling for good is that you have to send your subscribers culturally resonant content. So what does that mean? Here you see a quiz. It's asking people how they identify. Are you Hispanic? Are you Latino, Latinx, Chicano, Chicanex, something else? Our community is not a monolith. And so instead of us assuming that we identify ourselves with one word, one of our most popular pieces of content is one where we actually ask our subscribers to tell us what they like to be called. And then we give them the history of the word Hispanic, of the word Latino, and engage them with some interactive interplay with our chatbot for good, as I like to call it. But beyond sending culturally resonant content, what we do is follow these three pillars. You heard me now just say a little bit more about interesting insights that your subscribers give you when they're interacting. And so yes, we look at what people are clicking on and we look at what people are sharing, but we also do a lot of customer discovery. Those 450,000 people are our community and so regularly we are asking them, what issues do you care about? What do you wanna receive? What do you want to read? What will make you laugh, cry? How can we meet a pain point or meet a service for you that you are not consuming? The second is that we send content based on micro stories. And so you might think that sending a story to somebody about Juanita Gonzalez who did this, this, and that and had this very powerful experience might not resonate with the rest of us because it is her very personal lived moment. It might seem counterintuitive, but actually we find that when we send stories that are hyper-focused on an individual, everyday Latino in the US living and thriving, that resonates with a whole host of people that can connect their own personal experience and can relate to what this person was living. So if you follow Pulso, you'll also see a lot of micro stories like the one I just shared. The third is conversational language. If any of you have already started to interact with Pulso, you may have seen my face pop up, and that's the point. When you get a story, all 450,000 subscribers will get a message from me that says, hi, I'm Liz, today I'm gonna tell you about this, this, and that. You're gonna be talking to me as if you were with me at the bar, hopefully, and with our other Pulso staff. And the idea is to be sharing entertainment and news and educational content in a conversational manner feels like you're actually talking to the person, not with big jargon or with a five paragraph essay article format, but rather, hey, this is what we do, this is how we do it, this is what we're talking about today, did you like this, share it, tell us more, and share it with your friends and family. If you take anything from those three pillars, really what we want you to take away so that you can make your newsletters and communication with your staff, with your constituents, or with anybody else that you want to share your message with, it's these three words. Listen first. Regardless of who you're communicating with, see what's resonating. Is it a shorter piece of content? Is it a newsletter that only comes out once a month instead of every week? Are people actually interested in using the content that you're sending them, no matter the platform or the format? 
once you know what your readers and your subscribers, your community, your constituents, whoever it may be, what they want to consume, then you give. What a concept. You actually give people what they want to consume, obviously with your mission and your goals in mind, but in the format that they want. We know that Latinos over-index on Facebook Messenger. They over-index on WhatsApp. So we are not making them download a separate platform for us to communicate with them. We're not calling them on the phone. We're not going to their door. We're actually meeting people where they're at. And then you give people that content based on what you already listened to. And the last one is the ask. Only after you've listened and you've given can you ask. I mentioned that our mission is to increase the political power of Latinos in the US. And so we do that by asking our subscribers, after they've received all this great content, to share voting messages and petitions and actions with their friends and family because we know that the most powerful way to connect hearts and minds for change is if your friends and family ask you to do so. And that's what we're doing at Pulso. Thank you so much.